You know I'm always excited about new perfect picks, but I'm especially excited about this one because it was recommended by Charlie Scrivener, one of my library assistants during the first semester. She told me it was a good book, so I got myself a copy and read it too and thought it would make an excellent perfect pick. The main character is a 12-year-old boy named Charlie whose mom died and whose dad has remarried. Charlie now has several problems. First of all, his dad married a woman named Charlotte, and Charlie is sure she's a witch. He hates her and calls her the step monster instead of stepmother. Next, his family has had to move into Charlotte's purple mansion, the creepiest place in town. And finally, he can't remember the last time he was able to sleep without horrible nightmares. He can't even take a nap. He and his friends end up having to stop the nightmares from taking over their town before it's too late. This was a fun read. It's scary, but not too scary, and full of surprises. I think you'll like it. I have a new graphic novel for you called Camp Midnight. It's about a girl named Skye who is determined to not fit in when she's sent away to summer camp by her step monster. Yep, apparently there are step monsters everywhere. Anyway, luckily for Skye, fitting in doesn't turn out to be a problem because she accidentally boards the wrong bus and ends up at Camp Midnight, where everybody happens to be a full-fledged monster. Sky is faced with the challenge of keeping her identity as a human secret until she can eventually catch the bus for home. This is a creepy and funny story with some pretty wild artwork, and it's just meant to be read for fun. If you enjoyed Secrets, Lies, and Algebra, I have a sequel for you called The Writing on the Wall. Eighth grade, like algebra, has become pretty complicated for Tess. For one thing, there are the patterns she's noticing everywhere, like how charming on the outside Richard keeps playing scary pranks on her, and how annoying copycat Lynn always has to follow what everyone else is doing. Then there's the pattern of graffiti that keeps appearing on the wall by her school, could those numbers be a code meant for Tess? Is it up to her to find out what they mean? And most importantly, if Damien keeps up with his pattern of waiting for her after school, does it mean he likes her? Or is that just a coincidental system? Tess looks for formulas to help her figure it all out, but she's afraid there may be none. Sometimes you have to make up your own solutions. Sometimes you just have to risk it. Discover how Tess works it all out in The Writing on the Wall. If you've been reading the Lockwood and Company series, you'll be glad to know that Book 4, The Creeping Shadow, is now available. In it, a terrible crime forces Lockwood to turn to Lucy for help, and they both begin investigating dark secrets at the heart of London society. Their investigation stirs up forces that they may not be able to control, and Lucy and Lockwood find themselves challenged not just as professionals, but as friends, too. Don't forget, this is book four of the series. If you haven't started the series yet, be sure to ask me for book one, The Screaming Staircase. This is a series that's meant to be read in order. All right, I have to confess. While I never read books with a dog on the cover, I can't pass up a book that features a rat. Yep, that's right. Rats make great main characters, and you can be sure that they'll be clever, resourceful, and interesting. In Emmy and the Incredible Shrinking Rat, Emmy is a goody two-shoes whose parents have suddenly begun ignoring her. A talking rat in Emmy's classroom tells her that she's a big nothing and urges her to stand up for herself and try being bad. When Emmy finds out that she and her formerly loving parents are being drugged by their evil nanny with rodent potions that can change people in frightening ways, she has to try everything possible to return things to normal. Step monsters, evil nannies, woo. In What Makes You Happy, which is the second book in the Amelia Rules series, Gasp, otherwise known as Gathering of Awesome Super Pals, learns more about Amelia's mysterious Aunt Tanner's past deals with first love, ooh, figures out what it takes to be a superhero, and proves that eggs aren't just a part of a balanced breakfast. 
If you started the new Bone series, The Quest for the Spark, you'll be happy to know that book two is now available. In it, Tom and his friends meet a trio of very crafty bears and get caught in the depths of a dangerous beehive where the queen bee will decide their fate. Lorimar, the shape-shifting woman with magical abilities, is called away on an important search of her own. In book two, the quest continues and the threat grows stronger. I only have one copy, so please reserve yours today. Joe, April, Mal, Molly, and Ripley are not your average campers, and Miss Quinzella Thistle Crumpet's camp for hardcore lady types is not your average summer camp. Between the river monsters, magic, and the art of friendship bracelets, it's one weird place. In volume two of the series, Friendship to the Max, the Lumberjanes take on raptors and a sibling rivalry that only myths are made of. And why do I feel like someone's trying to shoot my eye out? Anyway, I have three copies, so get yours today. If you enjoyed the crossover, then you'll probably be very interested in Kwame Alexander's newest work. Booked is another novel told in poetry. In it, nobody can stop Nick Paul. He's a star on the soccer team, he's doing great in school, and he's getting ready to ask out the girl of his dreams. Oh. But then a bombshell announcement shatters his world. You wanna know what happens? Well, you know what my answer to that's gonna be. Read it and find out. If you're a regular viewer of the Media Moments, you know that I often feature one of our veteran perfect picks, and this week I have chosen the book Deadly. It's a very interesting novel that's based on true events which took place in New York in the early 1900s. The main character is a 16-year-old girl named Prudence Galuski, who takes a job as assistant to the head epidemiologist at the New York Department of Health and Sanitation. He's trying to discover how a seemingly healthy woman can be spreading a horrible disease called typhoid fever. At first glance, this might not sound like a very interesting book, but in fact, it reads like a medical thriller, and I was quite surprised to learn after I finished it that the characters in the novel are a mix of fictional people and the actual people who were involved. This is an excellent choice if you'd like to travel back to a time when there were no antibiotics and people did not have much understanding about how disease was transmitted. It's also a powerful portrayal of the woman who became known as Typhoid Mary. Was she a villain or was she a victim? Fly Girl is set in 1940s Louisiana and the main character is a young woman named Ida Mae Jones, whose greatest dream is to be a pilot like her late father. However, being African American and a woman were two strikes against her. When the United States entered World War II, the Army formed a group called the WASP, Women Air Force Service Pilots, and Ida saw her chance to do what she loves and help her brother who stationed overseas. Because she's very light-skinned, she's able to pass as a white girl to be accepted as a wasp. As you can imagine, this puts her in a very difficult position. Fly Girl is a fast-paced, interesting story that will take you back to a time when not everybody could follow their dreams if they weren't the right color or gender. This is a great choice for someone who enjoys historical fiction, is interested in World War II, or wants to read about a really strong female main character. In public library news, all teens are invited to make awesome art out of melted crayons on Tuesday, February 7th at 4.30 p.m. in the Hampton Memorial Library here in Easley. The library will provide all of the supplies as well as instructions. The Public Library invites all of you to join them on the first Tuesday of each month at 4.30 p.m. for a special craft program just for teens. Every month features something different, it's free, and all teens are welcome. For more information, call the Public Library at 850-7077. Speaking of art, be sure to stop by the library and check out the new display in the gallery. 
sixth grade art students have turned discarded book pages into a project called Blackout Poetry, a type of poetry created by highlighting or emphasizing certain words or phrases on a page and creating free verse out of them while blacking out or drawing over the rest of the page. You'll be amazed at the variety and the creativity of the poems and artwork they created. Not only did they produce art and poetry, they also made use of book pages that would have ended up in the recycle bin. This has been a really good project. I love working with Mrs. Young and you really need to come in and check it out. It's very cool. All right, it's time once again for the top 16 roundup. There's been no change in the first four places. Drama, Sister, Smile, and Cardboard are still where they were the last time. But look at Ghosts, all the way up to spot number five, which means Raina Telgemeier's books are dominating four out of the five top spots in the top 16. Girl Stolen is down one. There's no change for The Night She Disappeared or Wonder. Roller Girl is up two. The Maze Runner and the Night Gardener are both down one. The Raft is continuing to rise, and it's up two places. But look at the Guinness War Records 2015, up four spots since the last time we met. Dyer of a Wimpy Kid, The Ugly Truth, is down one. The Fourth Stall is down three. And All the Lovely Bad Ones remains in 16th place. Guys, get out there, read the books, share the ones you love with your friends. March Madness is coming in a few short weeks. It's going to start on March 6th, and we're going to be voting for the GMS Book of the Year. Stay tuned. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you found at least one book you'll be interested in reading. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to thank your teacher for showing the video. Please feel free to subscribe, and don't forget to be awesome. Bye-bye.